Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to paint this cat on a railing, and this is actually a time lapse today. There is a real time version of this video over in Critique Club. There's a link in the video description for you to check out if you want to. It is over a two hour project, so the time lapse will also be pretty long too. So buckle up; it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be a long one. I'm starting off by using my T square to draw a railing. Actually, this is gonna be where the cat is perched, and I'm using the same T-square just to draw the ballast in the railing. I'm just eyeballing it here. Um, uh, you know, you don't have to be too precise. It's nice to have a T-square because then you can get a nice perpendicular uh, line, which is really handy. And I'm using a Tuscan Red, I believe it's Tuscan Red, uh, Call Erase color pencil. These are the erasable colored pencils by Prismacolor. They're very affordable. You can either get them in assorted packs, which is what I have, or you can buy a whole box of one color if you know you only want to draw with one singular uh, color. But I tend to do my underdrawings with these because they erase so well. And also, they kind of meld into whatever you're painting. I really like them under watercolor and also under under alcohol markers, so they're just a very versatile product, I find. Um, I probably wouldn't use such a dark color if I wasn't filming because um, using the white paper on a black mat, things tend to get kind of blown out, so I'm using a darker color and drawing darker so that you can see it on film. Um, but go ahead and use a lighter color. Use whatever is dark enough for you to see comfortably, but um, you don't need to go as dark as this. So I'm here getting the uh, basic proportions of the cat's face. Uh, you've got a basic kind of circle for the head and then an oval for the muzzle and I get some angles in there for the eyes. Basically, I'm just trying to get everything placed fairly accurately and fairly symmetrically because I have a habit of drawing cats that tend to look kind of goofy and <laughs> um, I don't want them to look kind of goofy. Um, and I'm just kind of dividing up the bottom part of the body so I can get the legs. I'll push that back into frame in a second. Sorry about that. Um, sometimes I forget that I'm recording, even though I'm talking the entire time. It's uh, it's it's the way it goes. I'm sorry about that, though. Uh, so you can see I've got the legs down there, and I'm going to go in and um, erase any lines that I don't need, and that's going to... Um, that's going to make it so when I watercolor over it, I'm not going to have any extraneous lines. I'm just going to have kind of what I need. And you can go back to an extent and erase after you've added the watercolor, but sometimes the um, the binders in the watercolor will kind of seal up the paper and make it difficult to erase your lines. So I try to kind of lighten it and get rid of any of the... Um, the stuff I know I don't need. And now I'm going to use masking tape to mask off the railing and the ballasts. And since my masking tape is a little bit too narrow for the railing, I'm just cutting off a sliver and using that for the um, for the remainder of the space I need. And then I'm taking that uh, leftover piece and I'm cutting it even skinnier so that I can mask off the ballasts. And so it doesn't matter that my drawing wasn't exactly each each ballast wasn't exactly the same because when I stick down the tape it'll be the same and then I'm just using an exacto knife to cut around the paws and pick out that tape so when I go and do my first wash I'm not going to have um I'm not going to have you know the paws will get a little bit of toning to them and that helps me avoid that kind of cut and paste look now it's okay for the railing to be kind of hard and brighter than the background because it is a, a man-made um, item, but for the cat in the background, I want it to be kind of soft and, and blurry and all have the same kind of light and colors because it's going to make it harmonious. So that's why I like to do that. Not everybody does. That's fine. You can do whatever works best for your style. But I find if I painted the cat first and then tried to go in and do the background, it would look very kind of cut and paste and uh, unnatural. And I don't like that look myself. So that's why I tend not to use masking fluid that much because I feel like it gives you, unless I'm painting glass or something where I need sharp, bright highlights, it kind of gives me that, um, that cut and paste look that I personally don't like in my own artwork. But you can do whatever you like. So I'm also just throwing in some stripes on the cat with uh, some burnt sienna and yellow ochre and uh, just trying to get some of the work done. I didn't want to do it all in colored pencil because I knew that would be tedious, especially at this size. And I'm using uh, a new to me color pencil today. I'm using uh, the, the uh, Derwent Pro Color line of pencils and I've only swatched them so I really wasn't that uh, familiar with them or 
that confident <laughs> with them that I wanted to do a whole piece with them. They are a harder pencil, and although I don't have any strength issues, I think that I would really be fatigued by the end of a, um, a full painting with them on like a regular, like a watercolor paper or even a drawing paper because they are a very hard pencil. And uh, I'm flicking in some cadmium red mixed with the burnt sienna to get some kind of fall foliage looking tones in there. And if I get some spatter on the cat, I'm just blotting. Or if I get some green on the cat, I'm just blotting. I'm not worried too much. So I've used some sap green. I've used some um, cerulean blue in the sky. I've used some cad, uh, actually gamboge. Use some gamboge yellow and some cad red. And now after it dries, you can see the shift. It's gotten uh, a little bit more muted. And uh, now we're just going to start working on the, um, the cat stripes a bit. So I'm starting off by just dragging some shadow color, some kind of like a more rusty brown. I want that shadow on the center of the tail because the cat's kind of backlit. I'm not sure if you remember the uh, the finished photo that I showed you at the beginning. The cat is very backlit, so you've got more shadows on the interior of the body and then like uh, any parts of the body that protrude, they get this kind of glow where the light is lighting up those little bits of fur that's just kind of like... Um, on all the, the bumps and edges of the body. So I'm trying to go in and get some of those darker tones now. It can be a little uh, deceiving to put those darks in because when you start to put in your darker areas, it's gonna look really uh, harsh, but I think it's good to kind of get those darker values in because it's kind of like ripping off a Band-Aid really quick. You get those in and then you can determine the, the whole value range. So you've got a lot of light tones from that initial wash. And then you put those darker tones in, and you have, um, and then you have those. Uh, you have that full scale. You you know that everything else you put in there is going to fall between those ranges. That that initial light wash and the uh, the darker tones that you put in there. And to do this all in color pencil, I think would be extremely tedious. So getting some of that work out of the way with watercolor is very helpful. Now, I actually thought about doing this on a sanded paper or a pastel mat because I knew I wanted to use those pro color pencils. However, the pro colors, um, the, uh, the sanded paper and the pastel mat is not forgiving as far as being able to erase when you're sketching. And I didn't want to bother to sketch it out on copy paper and then uh, um, use my graphite paper to transfer it. I just didn't, I just, I felt like just drawing, just getting right to it. And uh, so I know if I used watercolor paper, it would work pretty well. And I could use watercolor to kind of take some of the work out of the background and save me some time. That said, it still was over two hours. This project was like two hours and 17 minutes or something. And that's how long the, um, the video over in Critique Club is, if you're curious about that. But, uh, but it was a process. It was an enjoyable process. There were a lot of times where I was like, ooh, am I going to be able to salvage this? But all in all, it was, it was fun and enjoyable. Uh, and I had some requests for an animal painting, so uh, hopefully that fits a bill and, and, uh, and folks enjoy it. So in this layer here, I'm just going over. The paper's dry, and I'm just using a mixture of the, like, the burnt sienna mostly, a little bit of cadmium red, and just kind of... Um, putting in some of the stripes. I put those darker ones on the legs first because they are darker. And then I kind of um, kind of worked around from there. Uh, and I just kind of varied the tones going by the, uh, the reference image that I had that was from Pexels. And I'll try to remember to link it down below. Hopefully I can find it again. Sometimes it can be tricky. I did download it and um, it's up in the, because it's a free to use commercially image. I did upload that into the Critique Club, so you'll be able to find that there. Um, and now I'm going in with a darker tone that I mixed using Burnt Sienna and Cerulean Blue, because that's the blue that I'd already used. And I'm using that to get those really dark shadows um, in between the legs and uh, kind of at the bottom of the cat where it's setting right against the railing. I really wanted to get those in again to Put that range of, um, of values in there and get that dark range in right off the bat. So I want to work on the face a bit. Again, you know, it's, it's kind of good to, to jump in there. And uh, I like to work the whole painting at once. Now, I know that's not how everybody does it, especially I've noticed a lot of color pencil artists will start on one side of the painting and just kind of work their way out or work their way over from there. And I can understand they don't want to rub their hands against their work. Um, but I like to work on painting all at once because that way you're, it's always done to the same level. So if you decide that, oh, I like this, I like the way this is, I like this looseness, um, you can be done and everything is going to be in relation to that. But if you start off with like a, you start off, say, at the cat's eye and you're going to work out from the eye, uh, maybe that's your favorite part to do and you want to start there. Um, 
you could spend a couple hours and get that face super detailed and then you realize, oh, this is one small part of the picture, so now we need to do the rest of it to a very similar level. I mean, obviously not the background, but you would need to do the cat to that very similar level of detail for it to look finished. Um, so this way, if you kind of approach the painting all at once, you start with the unifying wash, you detail, um, you kind of bring everything up to the same level of detail. Now, I'm not saying focus. So detail is different than focus. Focus would be like, um, like you probably bring the face into a little sharper focus to draw the eye to your focal point. You'd put whatever your focal point in you, you put more into focus, but um, you still want in relation, you still want everything else to be similarly detailed. Uh, I hope that makes sense. I tend to, I know I tend to talk about more about the why and the philosophy about behind a painting in the time lapse, and then I just go into kind of the bare bones, the tutorial, do this, do this, do this, this is what I'm doing, like for the longer version. I hope that's helpful. I do know a lot of critique club members will watch the time lapse first so they know what they're getting themselves into, and then we'll go to the longer version to paint along now that they've seen like what supplies have been used and um, in what order, and then they can kind of plan it a little bit better. So here I've let that second layer of watercolor dry and I'm going in with my pro colors, and I am having a little bit of a struggle uh, with the lighter colors getting them to show up. And uh, like I mentioned, these are a hard pencil. They do hold a point extremely well. I think, um, I know I, uh, I will be eventually reviewing these, but my first impressions of these pencils is that um, I think the darker colors would be very good to have on hand when you want like a uh, darker color that you can sharp to a really fine point, sharpen to a fine point, and then put in your detail. The lighter colors I find a little more difficult to release their pigment. Um, but so right now I'm thinking that they would be a really good detail pencil and I might just uh, I might put them actually in with my Prismacolors because they're very easy to tell apart from the Prismacolors uh, just by look. So if I know I need a dark this or that for a sharp detail, I could grab those uh, because the Prismacolors are just too soft for those really sharp details. So that's what I might end up doing with these. Um, but my first impressions would be I would recommend if you're curious about these to buy a few of the darker tones that you use a lot open stock and then um, and then see what you think before investing. These uh, are very similar, well, I won't say similar to, but similar in hardness to the Prismacolor uh, Verithian or Very Thin pencils, which I don't like the Very Thin pencils by Prismacolor because they snap, the lead snap. Um, I've had a lot of problems with breakage with those, but I didn't have any single tips break. I didn't have any issues sharpening these. They were really wonderful in that respect. And I think it's because the lead is so thick and strong that you can sharpen it to a needle point and it's got enough... Um, enough of the core there to support it, to keep it from snapping. Um, so I think that's gonna be what I end up using these for. I doubt that I will do a full uh, full painting in these, except for the fact I'm working on one on sanded paper right now that's coming out really well, and I really love the pigment strength on the sanded paper because it's just, um, it just grabs it so well, and there's like no glare because uh, they're not very waxy. They're, um, but they are a hard pencil. They're kind of similar to the Koi Noir Polycolor, but they're not as dry feeling, if that makes sense. But anyway, that's just my first impressions. I'm gonna be using them for a while before I do a review because they are a little on the pricey side. So it's almost like the more expensive a pencil set is, the more time I wanna spend on the review because I know it's a much more considered purchase for somebody watching a review. Um, you know, you don't, you're not gonna put as much consideration buying a, you know, a set of pencils where the pencils are like 30 cents a piece as you would buying a set of pencils where the pencils are $1.50, $2, $3 a piece. I think these range, um, I think you can get these open stock for about $1.50 a piece over on Blick. Um, and in sets, I think the 72 sets, um, I did see it on sale at one point for like $105, but it's probably a little bit more than that. I think that was one of those special like Derwent days when they had that sale. But um, for detail, really, I really like them. I like that you can sharpen them to a fine point. And that worked out pretty well with these darker colors uh, to get that fur texture on top of the watercolor. So that was, um, that was a really, a really nice effect, a nice way to use these. Now I did have to go in with my Prismacolor to get that brighter white glow on the fluff on the edges. So that's what I have there in that pencil holder. I go through white Prismacolor pencils like water. They're, um, I tend to bring them in almost any, almost any color pencil piece I do because they're just so uh, inexpensive and they just are so opaque. They just really get the job done. And um, I'm not really worried with Lightfast with a white pencil because what's it gonna do, fade to, 
white. Well, it's already white. You know, I'm not worried. About that. I'm not worried about that. So I got to fade to transparent. Um, so honestly, I, I don't, but I could buy them by a box of 12. They used to sell Prismacolors. Like you could buy them individually or boxes of 12 for quite a, a big discount. But now um, you can actually assort your colors by 12 over on Blick. So that's really handy. Uh, although I don't think I'm low on any other colors, but, uh, but the whites definitely, definitely, uh, are the workhorse of the Prismacolor line for me anyway. And I think even if you're not a big fan of Prismacolor pencils, you still might enjoy having that white one. I also like the Derwent, uh, light, fast white in their Chinese white, uh, in the drawing line. Those are both very good. Their color soft white's really good, uh, just depending on, you know, the, the type of pencil you want. I think it's just really hard to get a pastel pen, a pastel toned pencil, to have any oomph if it's a hard lead. That seems to be the deal, even with high quality pencils. Now what I'm doing here is I, it was just too empty and I'd had the thought of doing kind of like almost a fall time scene and have a pumpkin and a bottle or something, or maybe a blue plant pot or something. I wanted some blue on there that was gonna make the orange and the cat really stand out. So I decided to go into my color race pencils and I sketched a pumpkin and a bottle and I just went over it with water and blotted out the excess paint so that when I go over it with color pencil, uh, or in my first coat of watercolor, it's going to, um, the background's not going to be a big issue. I wouldn't mind seeing some of the background through the bottle, but I didn't want to on the pumpkin. Uh, and I'm actually, because that pumpkin and water and bottle are still a little wet, I'm putting a paper towel down to just keep my hand from like rubbing against that area of the paper and like pilling the paper. I, I generally don't have a problem with pilling on this Fabriano Artistico paper because it's very resilient. It's also got a, um, a synthetic sizing so it doesn't use uh, gelatin if you are trying to avoid gelatin sizing in your papers which is really nice i think actually because i when i'm when i'm thinking about sizing on papers going bad i think it does tend to be the gelatin sizing that eventually can go bad on paper but that said i rarely have cotton paper or have the sizing go bad it's usually on a cellulose paper where that happens but anyway um this is not an animal based sizing on the fabriano artistico just in case you're wondering um, I do like those lighter tones for like uh, smoothing out the line. So if you're getting, like, especially on watercolor paper, generally you wouldn't use cold press watercolor paper if you were doing a color pencil piece, but this is cold press paper. I do prefer cold press paper generally for watercolor, but when you're drawing and you're trying to draw fur on the bumpy cold press paper, you'll, you can get kind of a grainy line. So using those really light pro colors, cause they're so hard, they almost act like a blender and I can go over my grainy lines and almost smear the pigment into a more smooth line. So that's a, that's a nice use for the lighter tones. And there's a tone called Champagne, which is this beautiful cream off-white color that uh, was just working really well for going over the uh, the hairs on the cat and just kind of smoothing them and giving him that uh, silky, soft texture that I wanted on the cat's fur. So um, I honestly think that, that, you know, there's there's very few supplies are outright bad. Uh, it's, it's all about using the right tool for the job and, um, and using the right tool for your style. Like personally for me, I'm somebody who prefers a softer pencil. I like the more smudgy, um, expressive painterly look that a softer pencil provides. But if you're someone that's going for more of like a photorealistic or a highly detailed look, you are going to prefer a firmer pencil. If you have strength issues, uh, or arthritis or, um, even even hand tremors, I think that it would be very frustrating to use a very hard pencil because I think that like I was starting to I could start to get some fatigue swatching those pencils. I was starting to get a little hand fatigue, and I don't have any um, uh, any arthritis or anything. So uh, so yeah, it's definitely going to be I think more of a specialty pencil, not for everybody, but um, but certainly useful depending on the style that you do. So I'm doing a little underpainting here with the watercolor just to get a base laid down. Uh, with my Mgram colors, and I'm using the same colors I've used so far. I'm using Cerulean Blue on the bottle, not because I want the bottle that color, but because that's what I've already used and I want harmony in my painting. And then for the pumpkin, I'm using a mix of Gamboge and Cadmium Red because I've used both of those colors. So I think um, a problem that artists sometimes get into when they are changing their mind halfway through a painting and decide, oh, I want this element here, I need something else there, and they go to add something to their painting, like my pumpkin and bottle here, they will just uh, think, okay, oh, I want a cobalt blue bottle, so I'm gonna use cobalt blue watercolor. Or I want a, uh, a nice bright orange pumpkin, so I'm gonna use orange, rather than mixing from what they have. And when you do that, it, t it tends to make the painting look um, amateurish 
because rather than mixing the colors from what you already have, you just kind of grab what's already pre-mixed in the pan or in your set. And uh, and it doesn't look as nice. It looks kind of um, like, why are those colors there? And, you, and a lot of times you can't put your finger on it. You can't quite figure out what you don't like about it, but you just know something's a little off or something doesn't look quite professional. And usually that's it. It's just discordant. It's a, it's a discord that you're seeing, a discordant color. Now, the thing I'm preparing here is a product called Touch Up Texture and the and it's it, it looks like it's in a nail polish bottle it's a binder it's actually um you can paint it over an area of a colored pencil piece and that's you've got too much pencil and you can't add anymore and it will give you a clear barrier that has texture to it it's almost like a, a like a spot fixative and then you can go over it but there's this other product called titanium white which is essentially like ground up white color pencil essentially and you mix it in with that binder and then you can add really, really bright highlights, almost like you would do with gouache. However, if you were to add gouache or acrylic paint on top of colored pencil, it might chip off. So this is archival. And this product is made by a company called Brush and Pencil, and they sell it at their uh, the Brush and Pencil website, and they also sell it on Dick Blick. And I think you can get it on Amazon too, although the shipping makes it higher than those other two options. So um, I would I think the best price is probably Blick if you're getting other things. I'll link to uh, to where I can find it in the description so you can check it out if you're interested. But um, I was recommended that product by Lisa over at Lacry Fine Art, and I have not regretted it once. I I think I purchased every brush and pencil product they were all on blick and they were on a uh, they were a pretty good price and i haven't regretted anything the only thing that i will warn you about is the um the the fixatives that sometimes the uh the nozzle clogs when you don't use it but all you have to do is take that nozzle off and rinse it in warm water and um and put it back on and it's perfect so that's the only issue so if you do get that just be prepared to rinse out those nozzles once in a while and don't throw it away if it stops spraying it's probably just needs to have the nozzle cleaned because uh, I hate that when somebody throws away something that's perfectly good because they don't realize that they could fix it really easily. But you can see how much that uh, that touch-up te texture plus titanium white, how that, that really stands out. It's so nice and bright, and I really needed that for that glow, that contrast on the cat because it, it is not a high contrast painting. And uh, I'm trying to grab those little bits of, um, of highlight where I can so I can get those value shifts and contrast shifts where... Um, where I can just to make the cat stand out from the fall foliage a little bit but I loved that kind of like uh, that nonchalant just sitting on the um, sitting on the railing with a little bit of a tail curl I just thought that was really uh, really sweet and I liked it and I just thought it's just a slice of fall you know you can almost feel the the, the cool crisp day um, and the cat almost looks like he's about to say something so it kind of reminds me of like um, uh, you know like uh, a like Sabrina the Teenage Witch or something like that, you know, I think the cat's going to say something. And I think that's kind of magical. And, and fall just kind of feels a little magical because, you know, Halloween is right around the corner and everything seems a little bit spooky sometimes. And, um, and yeah, I kind of want to catch that vibe in this picture. So here what I'm doing is I'm using a Delft Blue, which is kind of the closest color to indigo in this uh, pro color uh, range. I don't think there's an indigo in there. Um, and I'm just putting in my shadows, then I'm throwing in a little bit of white to preserve some highlights, and I'm going in with some ultramarine to get that kind of cobalt blue, that classic cobalt blue look. And um, I'm just kind of layering back and forth, and I'm also leaving some of the area untouched so the background can show through. So you just kind of work back and forth. The uh, Prismacolor will give you that brighter white. The white from Procolor will be more of a blender. Um, and it will maybe shift the color a little bit, but it's more going to blend it and make it look shiny and hard like glass. So I'm telling you, there's a tool for everything and you just need to get to, uh, get to know your supplies to see what's right for you. And I think that's the, uh, I think that's the biggest takeaway that if you have a supply that isn't doing what you think it should or isn't working for you, try some different different applications. Um, one thing that I do sometimes is I will look for reviews for products that I already own because and, and look to see how other people are using it because sometimes it's just like I've never thought to use it that way or I've never tried it on that paper or I've never combined it with that other media. And often there's a way to use every product that will enhance it that will work with your style and you just um if it's not working for you it doesn't cost you anything to look for reviews online and see how other people are using it uh, you know of course you know everybody's everybody's different opinions so you know it's always good to check out a few reviews because you know everybody's gonna have a little bit of a different preference and whatnot i mean sure there are some bad supplies out there but um 
it's really the magician, not the wand, you know? <laughs> speaking of, of uh, speaking of, like, uh, of magical things, it's the magician, not the wand, friends. So learn how to use your materials. And I am using, I've kind of switched over to the Prismacolor here because I wanted that kind of like waxy, you know, pumpkins kind of have that waxy texture to them. I, I wanted that texture. So using the Prismacolor is a lot easier to get that buildup of smooth, creamy color. But I do like that I can, I can interchange between both lines. But anyway, I'll have a full review on the Pro Colors after I've used them for a couple weeks. I don't, I don't want to jump the gun um, because they're kind of pricey. I want to make sure that, 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 uh, that I've kind of got everything, that I've got all the facts, that I've, you know, made up my mind and put them through their paces before I give an opinion on them. I don't think they're going to be the pencil for everyone. I do want to say that right off the bat. If you've been kind of, kind of waiting to, uh, to potentially purchase them, I think I'd wait a little bit longer or maybe order a couple open stock because they, they are very firm and it might not go with, um, it might not go with your, with your style. Uh, I just, I feel like there may be the pencil that's not going to appeal to everybody, but the people that need that type of pencil, it's going to appeal to them. I guess. I don't know. I don't know how to say it. I haven't used them enough to give a definitive opinion. But I do like this. I'm using, um, I'm not sure if this is the black or the chocolate brown here. I think it's probably the chocolate brown. Um, I sharpened that to a fine point. I used my Coom um, long point sharpener. I need to change the blades on those, but I did find they sharpened really well with that. And um, often that pencil sharpener aggravates me because I end up breaking the tips off my pencils because they're so soft, the ones that I typically use. Um, but that worked perfect for these. And I definitely need to need to change those blades and um, and sharpen those more to a point because I because they do seem to hold their points really well and not shatter, which I really like. Um, I am adding a little bit, uh, some little more highlights with that, that fine brush. That's with the, the titanium white and touch up texture. And I find that I tend to, <laughs> I tend to fiddle with those highlights a lot because they're so fun to add and, um, and it's very, very addicting. But anyways, if you would like to see a real-time version of this tutorial step-by-step, -step, it is up now in Critique Club. You can check that out over at lindsaywyrick.teachable.com. I'll have a link in the video description. If you want to click on that, it's $5 a month, and you get access to, um, oh, dozens and dozens and dozens of tutorials. And you can get feedback from me on your artwork if you like. So uh, thank you so much for watching today. I do appreciate it. Until next time, happy crafting.